Hey there, Amplifiers. Thanks for tuning in. And we have a, a fun session today. Now, we're going to be talking about ways that you can amplify your business, getting fresh perspectives from business advisor who's very savvy, very knowledgeable, and an expert in her industry. Kathy Grossgerth is uh, going to be joining us in just a moment. And I just wanted to um, take a moment to, to check in with you. So last week, I had the opportunity to experience spring break with my kids and, and my wife as well. She came along for the journey. <laughs> and we went to St. Augustine's Alligator Farm. And it was a fun thing to do. You know, you get out of your normal routine. You start being around different environments, different animals. You get a different perspective, right? And that's what's helpful sometimes to tune into these sessions because you get different perspectives from different people. Now, the alligator farm is great. It's, it's filled with interesting alligators. They make things uh, unique, a unique experience. But one of the things I noticed there was this, this sad little alligator over here in the bottom. He's got a bunch of bird poo on him. And I'm just looking at him thinking, oh, my gosh, he's just laying there and apparently in a spot where a bunch of birds have combined and done their business. And then just thought of the analogy of how, you know, if you just stay in one spot and you don't adapt to the, the trends and the changes and you're you're not growing, then things can happen to you, right? <laughs> so Kathy Grosskirth is with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple. Uh, she really is a rockstar professional when it comes to doing QuickBooks training and consulting. Um, both desktop and online. She's an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor. And she is also uh, one of the top 100 Pro Advisors from 2019 to 2021. She leads an awesome uh, group of business advisors. So I'd like to welcome to Growth Amplifiers, Kathy. Kathy, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for visiting today. Hi, thanks for having me on, Kenny. So I would love to hear your story of kind of like what got you into this industry in the first place. Everyone has a story of kind of like what got them inspired to stand in their industry. And I'd love to hear your story as we're getting kicked off. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I actually started doing bookkeeping way back in 2004 as a volunteer with the uh, Georgia um, disaster recovery, or actually it was Cobb disaster recovery. We had record floods from Hurricane Dennis come up through. Uh, it came up from the Gulf, uh, got got really hammered in the Destin Fort Walton area. Mm -hmm. But uh, on that weekend, there was like 13 to 15 inches of rain dumped on us and severe flooding throughout. And uh, FEMA was not uh, involved. So we basically had to form our own local group to handle all the requests that were coming in for repairs and stuff like that. And I started using QuickBooks desktop, uh, using the job costing features of that to kind of segment out who was doing the work and, and to allocate the work that way. And uh, long story short, uh, in 2012, I decided to break off on my own and do individual bookkeeping for various clients. And I've, I've been doing that here and there. Fast forward to 2017, I went to my first scaling conference and decided to get um, certified as an advanced certified, cert, uh, certified pro advisor. Let me get it out. And, and ever since then, I, I decided to kind of segue more into training because that's been my background is I used to work with Microsoft Office products and I still do. But I was finding a lot of the people coming up in the bookkeeping realm were learning how to use QuickBooks, but they didn't have the background in bookkeeping. So my training is kind of twofold. I, I Like you said, I work with both desktop and online uh, versions of QuickBooks, but I want to make sure that the people get the fundamentals of how to use the software properly. In order to do that, you have to understand a little bit about how the bookkeeping principles work in the background. 
because you got to have that knowledge to do that. And so in the last two or three years, I've kind of shifted my focus and I'm getting a lot of trainings now from individuals wanting to learn those basics as well as from other uh, accounting firms with staff. I've done a couple of those real far. I've partnered with, uh, you probably heard of Liz Scott with the Appy Hour. I've been, I've done some work for her. I've done some work for Alicia, who you recently had on your show. So I've been trying to do some partnering with some of them. I have a YouTube channel that's right now at 600 subscribers, hoping to get to that uh, magic 1000 this year so that I can start monetizing. And, you know, I just, just love doing what I do. It, it's been an, an evolving thing and, 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 and I see it continuing to evolve and I can, and, you know, I can see myself doing this indefinitely. I, I don't see where, you know, and I don't know what, and what the beauty of it is, is I don't know where it's going to take me. And I, I don't, I, I have general plans, but I don't have anything specific because I want to be open to, you know, new things that may be coming down the pike. So I think that is a very a healthy approach. You have an idea of what your gift is, what the value that you're bringing, but we're also flexible that, you know, different opportunities are going to present themselves. Right, right. As long as we're adapting, right, <laughs> um, and shifting with the tide, then it it really works for us. Um, so, thank you, Kathy. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to learn about Kathy yet, definitely go to bookkeepingcleanandsimple.com. She has a lot of information on her website that would be worth checking out. And we're going to get into our um, big three today, if this worked for me, um, which first thing we're going to talk about is kind of like the dark side of tech and how technology uh, can work for you, but also how it can work against you and then what, what you can do about it. And then we're going to be talking about how to differentiate your business that you're doing a great job of, you know, being able to share the value that you provide, leading uh, different groups of people to, to build camaraderie, and then also how to excite and ascend your customers. So if you do business with them once, sharing different ways that you can provide value to them, creating additional win-win. Uh, so let's, let's start off with the, the first point. Um, we're talking about the dark side of tech. Now, technology is really great. It can be used to simplify your life. It can be used to automate and help you be more efficient. However, it also can have a dark side too. Um, because if, if you're not using it correct, or like you mentioned earlier, if you don't know the reasons behind doing some of the things you're doing, you could be doing them incorrectly. So right. I'd like to get your your perspective on where some people are getting themselves into trouble when it comes to leveraging technology. Yeah, well, uh, and I may have a kind of a unique approach to this because mm -hmm. I am all for using technology. But like you said, technology can sometimes get in the way. And, and I actually did a... Uh, post last week on Facebook and on some of the other social media where I was talking about how uh, technology in of itself, if, if you neglect the human side of everything, then you may have the best tech stack, you may have the best processes in place, but if you ignore the human element or place less emphasis on the human element, then you might as well not even bother because you've got to build those relationships. And that's kind of what makes me different. I know that's kind of answering the other question there, but that's kind of what makes me different. My my focus is on developing and sustaining and com, com, uh, cultivating relationships because we'd like to do business with people that we know, like, and trust. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is to develop those relationships. And as we know, those take time. And, and one of the things I forgot to mention is that, um, and you had also mentioned is I have a, a, a water group, which basically started off in 2018. We're in our fourth year now. Uh, we've been meeting virtually for the last two, uh, two, almost two and a quarter years now due to the global situation and hopefully to get uh, some, some in-person hybrid meetings going. But our group is basically, even though we're based out of Atlanta, we have folks from all over the U.S. joining in. And I find that a lot of people that I meet at like Scaling New Heights and some of these other events wanted to be a part of our group. And we do have monthly meetings right now that are mostly facilitated by Zoom. But that's how we kind of cultivate and sustain those relationships. Even though we realize that being in person is the best way to do that, you've got to leverage that technology to make sure that you 
are able to stay in touch with those people. But, you know, I, as much as I've enjoyed having those people virtually, I, I like really seeing them in person, which is why I look forward to going to places like Scaling New Heights every year so I can reconnect. I love that. In, in fact, that's really what, you know, you mentioned that's a way that you differentiate your business. And that's really what we're trying to build here at Growth Amplifiers as well when it comes to marketing and sales. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of technology out there that will help you automate different parts of your business. And maybe it'll help get your message out there. But at the end of the day, business is between people. It's about right. relationships. And if you get too focused on just numbers or closing business, then you're really not doing the better job of opening the relationship, which is where it should be. Um, about building the, the trust and, and providing value and, and really establishing a way that you're getting people to connect and helping each other create win-wins. So I like that that you're you have that as part of your foundation. It's it's not just about let's just get this process in here and hope it hope it helps somebody with their numbers. You're you're really saying let's think about the relationships. Let's make sure that you understand the fundamentals, and then let's of course make sure that you're getting that technical knowledge too. Right, absolutely. So that brings us actually to uh, number three top point is how to excite and ascend your customers or how do you create a memorable experience? And some of the times the people that I connect with can get in the mind frame, oh, I don't want to um, sell anything. And, and I completely get it. You shouldn't push your services on people if they don't need it. Um, that That's how sales gets a bad name. But if you can provide value to somebody and can help them out, I think it's a good thing to share with them. Hey, this is a way that I can help you. Um, sometimes people get tunnel vision because they already have customers and they think, well, if my customers needed additional help, they would just ask me. But I think that's not always the case, right? Sometimes they don't even know what they don't know. Right. So we've, right. we've got to do it our job to help them see where you could potentially take them. So what what's your approach when it comes to educating your existing customers or existing relationships so they could see, oh, this is how Kathy can really help me in my business? Well, I think it goes back, Kenny, to the uh, concept of developing those relationships. And even though I say it takes time, and, 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 and I started doing that because I was working uh, – some of the things that I did before I decided to go ahead and, and, and do this accounting stuff was I volunteered with uh, various organizations that work with job seekers. And again, I think that was where the crux of where I decided that, you know, relationship building is, is crucial to everything that you do. I mean, even I mean, and it transcends uh, work, it transcends life, basically, because, you know, you've got to have relationship in order for everything to basically work. And, and, and people want to shortcut that. And unfortunately, you cannot shortcut that. So um, uh, one of the things that I encourage people is, and one of the things that I, I, I've taught at conferences, and, and I talk about this a lot in our winter group meetings, is that networking is about uh, basically developing those relationships and helping them with even if they're not going to purchase from you, you know, and, and again, part of that is, you know, establishing that trust and establishing, you know, the, the fact that, you know, you're, you're there and, and you want to help people. People can sense when, when you're not genuine, they can sense when you, you don't really care. So, um, and, and then the other thing is that people don't realize what a long game it is to, to develop those relationships. Again, they want to take those shortcuts. And, and you can't really do that. You've got to work on those relationships and, and over and, and it's taken me years to develop the relationships that I have. And 
I, I still see it as a work in progress because every new person I meet, I, I, I have to go through basically the same process to get them to know me and trust me. And, and it's through those relationships that I've been able to get solid leads probably in the last two or three years, I would say, is those, you know, the groundwork that I've been laying is really kind of reap benefits because I get referrals uh, from a lot of people that I, I've met at some of these conferences that I've developed wonderful relationships with. And so I've been really blessed that I haven't had to go out and do what you call a lot of selling. Uh, and, and then when I do talk to people, you know, I basically tell them straight up that, you know, I'm, I'm not the low pro price leader on, on any of this kind of stuff that you're working with me. You're, you're um, paying for my expertise and what value I can bring to you. Uh, and, and I have a lot of one offs. And fortunately, I haven't had a point where I haven't had, you know, a you know, other other things in the pipelines. It's been it's been a really blessing, even though I do have a handful of clients that I still do uh, books for just to kind of keep my skin in the game. But, you know, it, again, it's about building and, and developing and cultivating those relationships because you, you've got to be able to um, be the first thing that people think of when, you know, they want something along the lines of what you're doing. And, and it also goes into making sure that, um, and, and what makes me unique is a lot of people say is that, you know, my, I guess my approach to what I'm doing, I, 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 I'm not an Alicia type where I, I do a bunch of webinars. Most of my training is one-on-one. -on -one. I sell basically blocks of time that you can kind of sit with me one-on-one, -on -one, which may be a little bit more expensive, but for some people, but for some people, that's how they learn. They don't learn sitting there watching a webinar or watching, you know, a taped, uh, you know, self self class or whatever. So that's kind of what makes me different. I know I kind of went around about answering that question, but hopefully all that makes sense. Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the start here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the start here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. It, it does. So there, it does answer the question because, you know, there is a market for some people that maybe they, they just want to watch class and that's how they want to engage. But then there's also a market for people that they want to work with a guide. They want to work with pe someone that can help answer their specific questions and really spend time diving in deep to their uh, specific situation. It makes a difference. You know, those little differences between a business are all, they all add up. So it, I like the, the point too, you know, it, it's about having a process to stay top of mind, to build relationships. And if you're familiar with Growth Amplifier's value journey approach, it's all about finding that balance between if, if you're not, well, if you if you push your services on people, you're going to push them away, right? Um, it's That's just the salesy approach. However, if, if you don't have any plan to potentially move a relationship forward or let them know how you can provide value, then you can end up spending a lot of time meeting people. So spending time building relationships and sharing the value that you provide consistently turns those opportunities into action. Mm -hmm. So yep. I love it. I love it. And that takes us right into this um, advisor's picks section. Love this section. This, this is kind of like just getting your insights, Kathy, on some of the things that you've picked up on your journey that you'd like to just give a little shout out to. And we're going to start off with just a productivity tool, something that you use that you find beneficial and maybe would share with others, just improving with productivity. Well, I actually have a couple of things and I've talked about Calendly in the past and I still love Calendly for scheduling my initial appointments. But one of the things that I've recently started doing and refining my process with integrating more of my calendar uh, into my uh, phone. So that way I, I've recently been able to take a, a Google calendar mm -hmm. and integrate all my Google calendar, my personal, as well as my work related stuff 
everything is in my calendar. I even recently shared with my kids and my husband my calendar. So that way they have no question as to what time I have available. Because I mean, virtually everything is listed on there. So that way, if they want to know if, if I have time to do something on a certain day, I said, well, you can look at my calendar and see what I have scheduled for this day and that day. I even have vacations on there. Just just everything, even the upcoming uh, scaling conference is, is on there. Just just everything is on there. So I would say if you can do a good job in integrating everything in uh, scheduling, everything is the key in making sure it integrates with. And I use this phone for everything, a timekeeper, just about everything. So that is a great tip. Um, getting your information into a productivity uh, calendar. Calendly is a great tool, but even if you're not using Calendly, just using a digital calendar, sharing it with your team so that everyone can get on the same page prevents a lot of back and forth on when are you available? I'm available at these three times. Okay, none of those work for me. How about these? Okay, this one works. Well, now I'm busy. So exactly. <laughs> avoid, avoid some of that. Um, so now, now we're going to go into a, a book. Uh, what's a book that you've recently picked up that you've found helpful or that you'd like to share? Well, I won't say it's been recent. It's probably been about a, a year or so since I've looked at it, but I, I try to read it every year. It's called Boundaries, and it is basically, and I will put this out there, it's basically a Christian-based uh, book on setting boundaries, good boundaries. And, um, and But I started reading it about 25 or so years ago when I had problems with setting really good boundaries. And it was truly an eye opener. And that's one of the things I'm going to be teaching about at this year, Scaling New Heights. And in that session is called Commitments and Boundaries. Your yes should mean something because it talks about what boundaries are. It talks about how um, we may have a, a bad way of setting boundaries with others and, and, and especially sometimes with ourselves a lot of times because boundaries, uh, if we let people run over our boundaries and we're setting a precedent. So, you know, there's ways that we can set boundaries. And I'm going to talk about that at scaling this year about how you can start setting boundaries. So, you know, hopefully those of you who are coming in June to Orlando will, will take part of that class because I'm excited to teach about that. I, I think that's an important thing, even with the greatest intentions. Like I love to help the underdog and I love to help people out, but you've, you do need to set some boundaries, right? If you don't, you can give away all these off oxygen masks, not put your own on be like, <laughs> so we've got to put our own mask on first. Right. And that's not a selfish thing because that gives you the ability to help other people. Right. Right, right. So and I do talk about that analogy as well. So, yeah, I do. So that's, um, you mentioned event, and that is a great event. Um, Joe Woodard, um, Woodard Institute, Scaling New Heights. It's going to be down in Orlando this year, which is going to be right down the road for me. I'm going to be out there with my business partner, Manny Torres. Um, so looking forward to going to that event. Um, and now we're looking at, maybe an online show, um, whether it's YouTube or a podcast or something that you, you check out from time to time saying, hey, this is kind of cool. Maybe others would be interested in checking this out. Um, there, there are various things that I've listened to. And quite honestly, I, I haven't listened to it as much as I would like. But here recently, I've been trying to catch uh, Dave Leary's and Blake Oliver's uh, Cloud Accounting podcast. That's one of the Seems to be an up and coming one. They, they've been around for a long time and they partnered up a couple of years ago and, and, and they've been really doing great to uh, not only have good speakers on there, but to talk about, you know, trends in the industry. David has worked uh, a number of years for Intuit, so he knows a lot of, uh, you know, based on what what his knowledge was, is working within Intuit, what's going on. But they seem to have a pulse on uh what's going on in the industry and, and with the techs and all that. So, you know, the, that, that would be one I would recommend. Um, if you're into wanting to know what apps are all about, uh, certainly Heather Satterley and Liz Scott's uh, QB Appy Hour would, would be another one to 
be a part of um, that one. Again, I haven't I haven't really had a chance to really attend too many of those. I need to make a better effort. But those two are the first two that I think of when I think about what you what you've asked about online shows. So it's that is the the blessing uh, and challenge with today is we've got the option to hear so many different cool things from so many different thought leaders. Uh, and we can't we can't check it all out all the time. But when we're aware, we can we can tune into different things when we can. And that's that's really powerful. So thank you for sharing that. And that that really kind of helped teed you off. I, I shared two things for your online, which which actually covered a few different thought leaders. Um, so if you if you you can count that as your thought leader, unless you wanted to highlight a particular one. Um, is there somebody you'd like to highlight in particular, or we'll just count those as some thought leaders that you might well, want to check out? There's a couple of them that I want to mention really quickly. Joe Woodard, who seems to have his pulse on what's going on in in the at least the QuickBooks world, but in a, in other things as well. And and Hector Garcia. If anybody wants to learn QuickBooks, he's got a fabulous YouTube channel, and um, I, I was recently blessed that he. Uh, was uh, showcasing something that was available in one of my client uh, test files <laughs> uh, that that uh, he put in one of his videos. So, uh, but yeah, he he's been doing it for an awful long time. I think he was one of the first ones to do YouTube videos, and, and he's up to a hundred over a hundred thousand subscribers now. He's like totally or, or million subscribers. He's he's up there. So uh, off the chain. Yeah. When when you do something. You got vision, you keep consistency, just like putting out uh, frequency of a radio station, right? Put out great hits, and then people start tuning in, they share it, and then it really takes off. Um, so that's something to consider. One of the things that I'm familiar with both Joe and Hector uh, is is they've niched the the content that they're putting out there to a certain community. Uh, so I know that sometimes we we think, oh, if I offer more. Uh, that'll apply or, or be helpful to more people, but it can actually have the adverse effect of uh, people don't understand who it's for and therefore they they don't find it's for them. <laughs> so it's a good idea to get uh, more of an audience is to really focus your message on who your audience is and cater your content for them. So um, if you're tuning in, as mentioned, um, Kathy Growth Kurth has an amazing company. So thanks for tuning in. And you know, if, if you haven't done this already, um, Kathy Growth Kurth, she has an amazing company and she has good content on her website. Plus she offers consultations. So if you're looking to learn more about QuickBooks, about getting your numbers in order how, or taking action to better your business, um, visit the website. Um, like she does help train people. So whether that's for yourself or your team. Uh, when you take new actions, you can achieve new results. So um, Kathy, it's one of the traditional things that we do on the end of these sessions is we get your input and share maybe something that you've learned on your journey that might be helpful for others on theirs. It could be related to your industry or it could be something just that you've learned on your life journey. So if you could just share something that might help other people amplify. I think we've already talked around it, but it's basically taking care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, then you're not going to have enough to take care of others. It's like filling up a bucket. If you, if you allow your bucket to empty out, you're not going to have anything to replenish other people. And it's like you made the analogy with, you know, putting the, uh, uh, face mask on in, in an airplane when, when you're having a, an emergency situation there, then you're not going to have enough oxygen to be able to help your kids or anybody else. So it's real important for self-care. Excellent. Well, uh, this has been real. Thank you, Kathy, for, for tuning in, for sharing your insights and expertise. And I appreciate you and what you're doing. Well, thank you. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.